well, I arrived there and uh, I queued up to see the Reverend Robert Bradford. I was standing there for about 20 minutes in the hallway. I was talking to some people who were there, but I ended up standing in the hallway when I heard a bang outside and it was like a firework going off but it was actually quite loud I didn't really think anything of it and then a couple of seconds later these guys came rushing in one was quite tall with a pockmarked face the other one was stockier, smaller behind him uh, the first one had a, I could see had a revolver in his hand there was somebody else came in and knelt down it looked like he had a Thompson submachine gun of course everybody started to run different places look you know scream shout all the rest of it and uh, the guy I remember raised the gun towards where I was standing and the door was open for the I think it was a gents toilets so I pushed somebody else and a couple of other people we went in there closed the door then there was a, a flurry of gunfire a lot of screaming and shouting and what have you when I came out I, I don't think that actually left when I came out because I could see the backs of them and uh, I know what it was I, I, and I walked into the room where Bradford was and I seen he'd been shot somewhere about the face in the chest and I think in the eye because his glasses were sitting you know, at the bottom of his nose and uh, I remember coming out and I lifted the the stock the handle of a Thompson submachine gun which had come off in the, the melee you know because there was a lot of people shouting and running about and I remember going outside and uh, that's where I seen Ken he was on the ground and a couple of people uh, trying to revive him and uh, I think it was the police bodyguard had his pistol out but he looked a wee bit stunned rather than anything you know and uh, there was quite a lot of people there you know so there's quite a lot of witnesses to the whole thing apparently he got in the car and drove off but the guys that come in, if I remember rightly, weren't wearing any masks. There was no, there was no attempt to hide their identities. You know, whether or not, I, I, police told me afterwards they could have been wearing wigs, or they could have been wearing makeup or fuss moustaches, but it didn't look like that. It looked as all they were pretty natural looking. If anything, maybe a wee bit of wax in their face, a wee bit of Vaseline or something. But uh, they, they walked in. I, I, I think the, the, and the, the idea was that they were, they were coming in dressed as if they were workmen. Because I think there was work getting done to the community centre at the time. And uh, I think that's why they were, you know, one definitely had a boiler suit on, or a type of boiler suit. Uh, the first one I seen, the, the, the taller of the three, he seemed to have a very tight fitting suit on and a, a, a policeman after, or a detective afterwards says he might have been wearing a flak jacket or a well, bulletproof jacket or something. But there was no, uh, they were actually quite, I wouldn't say the word professional, but they were actually knew exactly what they were about to do mm -hmm. you know there, there, there was no uh, no nerves bad or it didn't seem like that anyway they seemed to know exactly where to go and what positions to take up do you know what I mean they were seemed to have been well rehearsed or something or you know the taller of the two gunmen can you remember his face mm -hmm. and explain to me or give me a description of what he was like his facial characteristics well, he was the first one to come in, and he had a a revolver in his hand, something like um, some sort of thirty-eight or three three five seven magnum. It was a, a quite a large gun, 
but the blue end sort of better off because it was kind of shiny on one side uh, he was quite tall well I'm about five, eight, five, nine, but he would have been maybe six foot as I say bulked out by whatever he had underneath there maybe he was heavy but it didn't really look like that but he had a very uh, pockmarked face uh, you know like bad skin or scarred slightly scarred in the skin very distinctive then oh very much so that, that, that was a well I, for a minute I thought that was the last face I was going to see before I died because I, I was on the impression they were coming in to shoot me mm -hmm. so that was I remember looking straight at him you know the other one came in behind him he was uh, dark stocky I didn't really even look at the guy that had the the Thompson you know and was there any time at all then that you ever became aware did the, the first gun mom did you ever become aware of his identity or did you ever did anyone ever become aware of his identity was he picked out in any way or did you recognize him in later life or i i remember about a year later i i tried to get in touch with the police in Maria. i was a detective i can't remember his name he was uh came from the south far had a very southern brogue i phoned up because i thought i'd seen somebody who looked yeah. like him yeah. And uh, I sort of got in touch with him. He got in touch with me a couple of weeks later, and then I thought nothing of it. You know, I just said, no, no, I, I thought somebody who looked like this guy. I, oh, you know, he says, well, you, you will do that. You probably will see people that, you know, it was like seeing a ghost when I seen him, you know. But uh, there didn't seem to be much of a an interest to follow the sort of thing up, you know. So w w when you you make an attempt to do something like that and somebody doesn't really isn't really that interested you just sort of forget about it yourself you know and the second gunman you say he was a uh, smaller stark stockier. smaller stockier dark haired yeah. and did you ever come aware later on or any have any idea of who he might have been I, uh, or fit any description well uh, uh, as i said it all happened very very fast and yeah. you know the the the, the first gunman in particular that's the one I got the real good look at the second one I always thought you know he looked very familiar you know but then there's quite a lot of people that look a wee bit like that you know you know I've seen photographs of people with their hair shorter and they look that wee bit much different you know but I remember his he, he was quite dark in his facial appearance shallow skin almost like uh, you know as if he'd been tanned or you know you get you get people with the darker sort of skin and I've uh, I was taken up to see I think on the Sunday night I was taken to special branch to look through photographs yeah. and I flicked through them and to be honest I never seen any of them and any of those photographs or even looked like them yeah. And later on in life, did you become aware of anything made of pain? Yes, I, I sort of had a look at photographs and thought, you know, oh, that looks a bit like, huh. you know, you know, but then again, if you join the dots, you know, huh. somebody should be joining the dots a lot. No. Huh. And who would you say that the individual looks like now, or as you? Well, the second one would be scapa teacher mm. and you're determined that that is him that that's who he looked very mm. like he, he was the the build mm. i mean his hair was something similar to what it is now maybe mm. a bit shorter or curlier at the back but uh that's it looked to me mm. as if it was him one last thing um mm. Later on in the play, you say, did you lift the stock, you said? I lifted the, yeah. well actually it was a, you, the top of some machine gun, you've got the stock, you've yeah. got a little handle. Yeah, it was, a, yeah, the yeah. fort. The four. And it sort of floats on it, huh. it's as if it's, you know, there's just a little wee, uh, I think it's a wee bit of steel holes it on. Huh. And I think in the melee, that ended up in the corridor. Huh. And I remember lifting it, because huh. I still had it on my hand when I was outside. Huh. 
and there was a policeman talking to me and I handed it to him I said look I found that did the police ever come along and fingerprint you no so you you had touched a vital piece of evidence your fingerprints was on that? yes I remember saying that the policeman as he yeah. shouldn't have left it yeah. So but it was in a sort of panic I left it and you, uh, you, to the best of your knowledge at least two sets of fingerprints were on that that stock you and the policeman well I handed it the yeah. policeman so at, le at, at, at least, least two yeah. Yeah. but you were never fingerprinted no to, to take you out of the inquiry no no that's right um, later on how did this how did the, the whole thing affect you uh I think for the first maybe two or three weeks I came a wee bit sort of slightly paranoid I was yeah. closing because I live facing yeah. basically you know almost I can see the community centre from yeah. where I lived and my father was a police reserve and my brother was a full time reserve and my other brothers were in the army and it, it made me become so aware how easy it is to kill someone if you're determined enough it's yeah. so easy to kill someone you just walk up yeah. I, I kept on thinking if the door had been closed or a bolt over it or yeah. you know if you're forewarned yeah. you, you're forearmed but nobody's every the real will just walk through yeah. you know as if there was no security there at all it was just so so simple so yeah. easy to do so I remember for the first couple of weeks I was on about pulling curtains turning lights out looking out the window I think it was the first time in my life that I actually checked underneath my car drove my car with my door open just in case something was underneath it and it would get blew out instead of blew up and uh, that went on for quite a while I suppose I, I was a wee bit paranoid about and did you suffer any sort of lasting effects like post-traumatic stress or if, if anything it's something I've never ever forgot yeah. Yeah. I've never forgot it does it become more real to you as life goes along? As, as I would say I would think about it probably every day mm. it's not, so there's always something that mm. reminds me of it you know every time I pass the mm. the community centre you know or somebody mentions Bradford or somebody mm. mentions Roy's brother or something you know it is very uh, something like that happening uh, if I remember the that night I went out for a drink with a girlfriend I remember a policeman said to me I'll just go and get drunk you know a way of coping with you know and then and, and those days nobody thought about you know yeah. counselling or anything like that nobody ever n nobody mentioned anything like that you would never you would never dreamed of something like that anyway you know but uh, definitely it was traumatic like it, it, it was it was the screams and the, I, I think in fact there was an old couple in seeing Bradford when he actually was shot an older man and woman you know I think that uh, affected them very badly because I remember the, the police saying that uh, they weren't very good witnesses mm. so they were probably really badly traumatized of it um, you talk about the policeman he had his gun out do you think did you hear him shooting or did you see him shooting no no I don't think he shot he didn't shoot no. not to your recollection anyway definitely not I think he had an old uh, 38 Scott Webley and Scott or something mm. and he, I don't think he fired around mm. and what was his uh, once the shooting had taken place and you'd come out uh, of uh, the toilet um, what was your recollection really of his behaviour? Traumatised. Mm. Mm. So he wasn't really trying to pursue no. The, the, no, the, no, the gun no. team or anything like that? I, I think he was actually only, only on his feet as they were leaving or mm. had left. Mm. But he didn't really try to, did he try to, he, well from what you've seen he didn't try to intervene. And no, I don't think so. I don't think he could. I think mm. he was held at gunpoint or mm. something until it was all over. Mm. But as they retreated, as they retreated, uh, he could have uh, tried to return fire to them, but that wasn't the case. No, I don't think mm. he did. Mm. There was no shots fired. I never mm. heard anything. Mm. Have you anything else comes to mind really about that? There, the aftermath of it, or really what sits out? 
the, the thing I can't well I don't know uh, the, the first gun man came in and shot but the, the second gun that man also went in and shot him you I'm not going to discuss but you have a a, a, a history of security forces in some sense mm -hmm. right do you think they were trained as in one gun moment then if you were if you were working with a gun team if you had been training somebody would have went down and shot and then somebody would have shared it clear and someone else would have come in did you get a sense of that sort of training with these people i got the sense that the guy the second guy came in hmm. was coup de grace he was the one who was yeah. making sure it was done so there was a professionalism too it wasn't, it wasn't just much. went bang 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 no no no, no. There, 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 there was a thing that they were uh, quite cool mm. they were very focused on what they were doing mm. and uh, it looked like nothing was going to stop them mm. you know but it was uh, well planned it's mm. basically is all you can say it was well planned and they seemed to know that there was nothing going to upset them mm, yeah you know as if there wasn't really that there wasn't a, 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 a chance that the police would return them or stop them going and doing that no it didn't seem like that it mm. seemed like that the, the all their bases covered mm. you know do you believe they'd been there before i'm sure they've been there before mm. the killing of mr campbell said so as being strange mm -hmm. they don't kill the policeman someone who they in their view would say he's a legitimate target kill him Someone who, if you're an IRA man, you would say kill first and foremost before they even went in and killed an MP, but they don't kill him. Mm. But they shoot an arm armed courtier. Yeah, well, that, 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 that was a, a thing that a lot of us all used to yeah. think about why. And Do you think he recognised? Maybe he did. But the thing about Ken was he, he was out there all the time. Mm. And uh, did he know them from coming in or out, or did he know? As I say, they didn't wear masks. Mm. Uh, that was a thought. Mm. You know, why? Why shoot them before they have actually done their their killing? Their killing. Yeah, you know, why why jeopardize the whole thing mm. by shooting somebody that they didn't have to shoot? Mm. Somebody who was they knew was unarmed. Mm. You know, the only guy that was armed was the police guard, and he was mm. they had him down. Was and hand. they didn't take his gun. No. Which is strange too. I always mm. thought that was strange because uh, they would have taken anything. Mm. You know, there's a clean gun. Mm. You know, what better to shoot somebody with with a, a gun that belonged to the police? Mm. You know, that's rubbing it in, isn't it? Mm. You know. And what way was it? Was he dressed in a suit, or was he dressed differently? The I'm talking about the policeman. He was I dressed was, in a suit. Yeah, I so he was a grey suit and a shirt. So tie. he was dressed differently from yeah, King well, Kim, so now, oh, Joe Blanc. It was quite going. obvious that he was a police guard. Mm. And if they had seen it before, they'd know he had one specifically. Yeah, maybe the same guy. Mm. You know. Listen, thank you very much. Have you anything well, else, or are you? Yeah. No, but what what you were saying about. Uh, the, the, the police guard as such mm. now I, I remember he was a reserve cop full-time reserve mm. and uh it seemed light for finnegan mm. you know which yeah. was an interface if he yeah. if he, he think of it between mm. uh finnegan road north and mm. finnegan road north finnegan road south mm. quite haphazard isn't it mm. having one guy mm. well i think it was very very strange you know, to, today you would, you know, if it, if somebody was under any sort of threat, mm -hmm. there'd be at least two. Mm -hmm. You know, one to drive and one to sit in the car. Mm -hmm. You know, but it, uh, I don't know. It just seemed very. Uh, then again, things were a bit more lax in mm -hmm. those days. You know, uh, but the place the, couldn't but be everywhere. They couldn't, but there was specific threat against Bradford at that time. Yeah, I would say so. There, 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 oh. he, he always sort of really was oh. under threat, and I think he knew himself he was under threat, yeah. you know. And uh, but it didn't stop him doing his mm. uh, surgeries and all the rest of it, you know. And he, he was full of like a, he was a Methodist minister. Oh. He was actually a quite, you know, God fearing sort of man. You know, he oh. wasn't. Uh, you know, people have heard it since his death. You know. They've sort of said he was like a like a, a firebrand paisley type and he was far from that you know he's a very quiet gentleman you know and uh it seems that his uh 
in his death now people have seemed to have rewritten yeah it, you know mm. making it out that he was somebody he wasn't mm. you know it's, it seems strange and sad Thank you.